Greetings, before we get into our holiday rankings, a portion of this video was sponsored by Magic the Gathering Arena. Enjoy. Welcome to the challenge. Magic the Gathering Arena is a PC game that makes it easier than ever to learn all the basics of magic, even if you're new to the game. It gives you all the tools so that you could learn to become a magic master faster than ever. Personally, I've actually never played Magic the Card Game, but I've always wanted to play it. With this PC version, it was easy for me to jump in, learn all the core concepts, and hone my skills. There's a lot of moving parts, but luckily, this program makes it very easy for you to learn everything. There's a color challenge tutorial that teaches you all the basics, and from there, you just queue into casual matches and slowly work your way into becoming a magic master. It's very easy, you can play at your own pace, and just by playing, you'll already be contending because by playing, you will unlock powerful magic decks that will put you ahead of your competition. And once you get the hang of things, there's multiple different modes like draft and brawl, and there's also special in-game events where you can win prizes. You could even become a Magic Pro in the next eSports qualifier. There's no better time to play Magic the Gathering, and Magic the Gathering Arena is the best way to do it, so download Magic the Gathering Arena for free today. Thank you so much to Magic the Gathering Arena for sponsoring a portion of this video, and now let's get back into Top 5 Beatdown for our holiday movie rankings. Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Shane. Ho, ho, ho. And welcome to the <laughs> holiday special of Top 5 Beatdown, a show where we compare top fives for topics that seem completely asinine, yet somehow garner strong opinions. And to add some credibility to the mix, we compare our top fives to that of an expert in the field. Today's topic is Christmas movies, and today's expert is slash film film critic and staff writer and host of the podcast Trekking Through Time and Space. Please welcome to the void, Hoi Tran Bui. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. We have our very real studio audience here. I don't have a real, you know, joyful Christmas sweater like you, Ryan, but I have something yeah. else for the occasion. Oh, there you oh. go. Really glad the two thirds of us showed up. I was not um, given any indication that we were doing this. There really is only one rule to what we define a Christmas movie to be. This might be controversial, I get that. But this is our show, so <laughs> it's our rules. It's our, it's our, it's our rules. We define a Christmas movie as a movie where it takes place during Christmas, around Christmas, or in the vicinity of Christmas time. So, sure. uh, On the record, I agree with this designation yeah. for Christmas movies. Yeah. This is a great source of contention amongst my slash film peers, but I agree with you. Really quickly, let's go around the table, and if there's anything that you want to say about your list, now is the time to say so. So Christmas to me is about being sentimental, being sweet, being a little cheesy, yeah, and yeah. something that I like to return to over and over again. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my list isn't necessarily like the best Christmas movies of all time. They're ones that personally I sort of associate with Christmas or childhood, which is a big part mm -hmm. of Christmas too, I think, sure. and family. I love that. This list uh, caught me by surprise. It delighted me in ways that I did not expect it to. I thought top five Christmas movies, I got this one in the bag, but I didn't. I had to make some tough cuts, things I'm not proud of, and still am not completely sure of when it comes to the bottom tier of my list. Mm. So we'll see. Let's, Let's list. list. Nailed it. My number five is Love Actually. Would you like it gift wrapped? Uh, yes, all right. Lovely. So mm. it's a movie that hasn't aged so well in some aspects. What I like about it is that it does have an undercurrent of sort of melancholy about it because not all of the romantic stories that we see end in happy endings. And I still really enjoy watching Colin Firth fall into a lake and watching Hugh Grant's dance. I actually <laughs> have never seen Love Actually. Uh, That's yeah. crazy. Love Actually was a real uh, squeaker for me. I really thought about putting it in at number five because like HT says, it like some of it has hasn't aged well, some of it's a little cringy, but it is like very, very watchable. It's yeah. so funny. Mr. Bean's in it, Richard Curtis doing his Richard Curtis thing. It's oh, just yeah. nice. I'll have to it's... check it out. I can't say much I about it. I can't believe you yeah. haven't seen that. I feel, yeah. I feel like hard to avoid. Shane, let's move to your number five here. My number five is It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Birch! My mouth's bleeding! Zuzu's pedals. Zuzu. 
There they are! Ooh, yep. man. It's low on your list. I've said this often. There are certain days where this could easily be number one on my list. I don't think I've ever watched that movie without getting a lump in my throat at the end and tears in my eyes. It works every single time. If there's any reason that it's number five on my list, it could be that every time I watch it, I forget that there's like a little bit of a stretch in the middle that I think is kind of boring where they're like oh, talking shit. about real estate a little too much. And I'm oh, like, damn. all right, well, we get it. <laughs> He's coming after Frankie Capra. How dare you? The whole like first act when they're still in their youth is just so charming. And... Look at the moon, I'll get it for you. Yeah, get yeah. out of here so with nice. that, it's good. What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. This is the movie that made me fall in love with Jimmy Stewart. I love yeah. Jimmy Stewart yeah. in this movie. It's just a sweet, sweet film. And it, Very it dark is too. like, yeah. it is dark, yeah. but I think that's why it probably works so well every time I watch it. It just sort of snaps into view and it makes you grateful for things. Probably a good holiday movie to watch, especially in holiday 2020. Yeah. Yeah, we need that hope amid the darkness. I, I gotta say, this did not make my list and I don't, I don't feel <gasps> great about it. I don't feel oh, great about no. it. Oh no, oh no. It got edged out by my number five. Let's hear it, Ryan. My number five is Jingle All The Way. Oh, excuse me. Yes? I'm trying to find a gentleman doll. Me too, me too. Do you have any more in the back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> it popped into my mind while I was thinking about my list. It didn't end up on there but I respect it. I know I'm going to have to defend this. Please do. Now, some might say this is a troll pick. You're wrong. First, I love how dark this movie is. It's a satire on Christmas consumerism. It's got this idea that this absent father is going to buy his child's love with this Turbo Man doll, which at its core is hilarious. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Casting Arnold Schwarzenegger as an everyman is the funniest thing on earth. The movie opens with him going, you're my number one customer. You're my number one customer. Classic <laughs> stuff. Credit to Sinbad as well. I was just getting back to that. Okay, point, all right, point, okay. No, point number three. We're catching Sinbad at the top of cool. his game. Sinbad, oh, yeah. never better than he is in this movie. He's got so many funny one-liners and he's genuinely hilarious during this movie. He's really good in it. I was just delivering some Christmas. Hey, back up. This is a homemade explosive device, and I'll blow it up. Know why? Because I work for the post office, so you know I'm not stable. Tell him. He also uh, definitely hands a bomb to uh, several police officers and murders <laughs> them, but then they uh, they just come off with like the black smoke and like funny hair. Very it's funny. like the Looney Tunes type of logic yeah. happening in this movie too. This movie just doesn't make any sense. It's bonkers and it works somehow. I don't know if it would work for a new viewer, but for me, I laughed my ass off watching this movie. Point number four, music throughout this movie aces. Number five. Well, you've got a no lot of points about this movie. Yeah, you have I'm, like a- Number five, Phil okay. Hartman. Also amazing yeah. in this film as the creepy dad who gets what he deserves in the end of the film and is involved in one of my favorite scenes of all time in which he is bragging to Arnold Schwarzenegger over the phone about how good Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife's cookies are. And then Arnold in retort <laughs> yells my favorite line, which is, put that cookie down now. Oh, these cookies. I gotta get the red from Les. Put that cookie down. Now! <laughs> Classic. Highly quotable is number six. Okay, go. Wait, uh, is this like a 12 point PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, Are you going to just like pull I didn't want any sass in the comments, you? okay? It's, oh, it's highly man. quotable. It's a meme factory. And also Arnold Schwarzenegger as point number seven and final point gets drunk with a reindeer, which is very funny. Yeah, I, well, I don't I don't have anything to say in the face of that. <laughs> I, I'm afraid if I do say anything, you're gonna throw out another like six point presentation at me. I mean, don't test me. I, I have several other points that I will make if I have to. Oh, but gosh, we will okay. move to number four instead. Well, why don't Let's we go, go to number four? Yeah. All right, my number four is Edward Scissorhands. Those are your hands? Oh man, that's a good one. Zammo! Yeah. I'll give that a Zammo. Yeah, that's good. I know everyone was gonna pick the other Tim Burton Christmas movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, but I love Edward Scissorhands and I think it's a far superior movie. I'm sorry for all the Ooh. Nightmare Before Christmas Ooh. stands, but also it <laughs> appeals very specifically to me because it's 
you know, a fairy tale about Beauty and the Beast type of romance and about the perils of conformity, which is very much in the vein of Christmas, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a really wonderful, really transporting film that kind of speaks to the loneliness that some people experience at Christmas. Ooh, yeah. This was another one that uh, was floating in my, in my cloud before I pulled some down. It takes a while to, to lean fully into the, the Christmas aesthetic, but when it does, it, it goes hard. And it, yes. it's like... And my it, argument for it being a Christmas movie is that it couldn't take place at any other time. True. Especially that transition into yeah, that Christmas that wintry scene. If you ask me to imagine cinema snow, that's the first movie that comes to my brain. Yeah. Mm. Mm, for me, it's true grit. I don't know why. <laughs> what? <laughs> my number four. It's Batman Returns. Meow. <gasps> the oh. Burden Train rides today. This is yeah, the one I consider in place of Edward Scissorhands, but. I mean, Batman Returns is slathered in Christmas. It is. Um, it's just filthy with it. <laughs> it's dark deeply rooted uh, in my childhood viewing experience. It's just fun to have this movie that is gross and creepy and delightful. And, and so, has Danny like, DeVito it... biting a man's nose off. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the film, he's just oozing black blood. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy that it inspires nostalgic Christmas feelings inside of me, considering how yeah. grim it is. And it's just so cold looking. It's so cold. I'm trying to think of cold cinema. What about the ice scene in Arnold's Mr. Freeze? Yeah, that's, Well, yeah. That kicks some ice. That does kick ice. I'm just quoting the movie! <laughs> I know you are. Let's kick some ice. Let's get to my number four here. Let's hear it! Number four is... Die Hard. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Yippee-ki-yay, mother... Yes. Yeah. At this point, I don't think it's even controversial because this is honestly the movie that causes the most debate about what qualifies as a Christmas movie. We all know this is an amazing film, perhaps one of the greatest action films of all time. It is a perfect action movie. I would say that too. We're all in agreement. We all respect this film. To make the argument that this is a Christmas movie, the central inciting incident of this film is the Christmas party, which brings Bruce Willis down and also it has one of the funnier Christmas lines I've ever heard delivered in a movie. It's up there where Arnold's put that cookie down. It's <laughs> now I have a machine. I don't know. I'm getting in a Hans group. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. I didn't put this on my list because while I think it's a perfect action movie and while I do, you know, agree that it's a Christmas movie, it's not like essentially Christmas to me. I feel like much. it lurks in the background. I'm never mm -hmm. unaware of the fact that it is Christmas because the decorations are up in the building. The last time I watched it was Christmas, so. Oh, yeah, there it is. And I watched this movie around Christmas time as well, so you know, it, it does feel like a Christmas movie to me. It has some of the best one-liners of all time. Welcome to the party when he throws the, the, the chair out the window. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Well, now you're just describing awesome moments. Yeah, you're now you're hey, just- Hey, look, this is an excuse for me to talk about Die Hard. Wasn't that awesome, man? One of the reasons I actually didn't put it on my list is because I was like, well, Ryan will have it on his. <laughs> it's true, and I did. My number three is a lesser known one. The Snowman. From 1982. Oh. Oh, the animated one? Yes. In case you guys didn't know, it is a animated short film based on the picture book by Raymond Briggs, and it's done in the same style as picture book. Every frame is like a painting. It looks gorgeous. I remember when I read and watched the story for the first time, it has a very sad, melancholy ending, and it left me with like this feeling in my gut that I had never experienced before as a very young child. And I, I realized what sadness was at that moment. And, oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. And that the only way I can feel things is through movies. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out. It's a wonderful movie that'll make you feel sad about life. And that's the favorite kind of feeling to have at Christmas. Especially 2020 Christmas. I watched that a lot growing up. Seems like a movie that, like a short that would not be made today. There's mm -hmm. just something so sort of delicate about it. It does make me very nostalgic for childhood. Yeah, it's really, really wonderful. It, it holds up and yeah, it has that delicate, simple feeling to it. Like childhood is beautiful kind of thing. Yeah. Ah! 
Ho, ho, Getting ho. Getting a little emotional about it. Well, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's move on to uh, Shane's number three here. My number three is the motion picture Elf. I walked all day and night to find you. Uh, you look like you came from the North Pole. That's <laughs> exactly where I came from. You know, Will Ferrell doesn't always do it for me. I like the guy. He's very funny, sometimes a little much. And this is very much a movie that could have been far too much Will Ferrell. He like balances it perfectly and sort of goes right up to the edge of being too much. And then he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if this, there's any other movie on my list that is like so purely joyfully celebrating the holiday. You know, there's like a snowball fight. There's like department yeah. stores. I love department stores. Me too, um, me too. I think I saw it and it became like a thing where like me and my friends and various people, we, I think we saw it like five times because it was just like so, so funny. Elf is a quote machine. Film. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. It's a great time. Like, I can't think of a movie in the past 20 years that has landed as hard as Elf and, and holds up. I love it. That's it. That's it for me. Number three is The Muppet Christmas Carol. Welcome to The Muppet Christmas Carol. I am here to tell the story. And I am here for the food. Oh. Now, this is actually a newer film for me. I actually had not watched this until this year. I'm a huge fan of the Muppets, and I actually am a fan of the original Charles Dickens tale. And I know that this could be kind of considered cheap in the sense of it's basically a skin of the tale. But I do think it's the most entertaining, and honestly, it's pretty faithful to A Christmas Carol. I think uh, it is the best adaptation of I that think, story. I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and agree with you, I think. So much to love about this movie. If you love the Muppets, you're going to love this film. Such little funny visual gags that are kind of woven throughout this film that come at points you don't really expect because you are fully engrossed in the story, mainly because of how insanely straight Michael Caine plays Scrooge. It is amazing what he does in this movie, fully commits, fully buys into the stakes, and as such, you were brought into the stakes as well, which then makes these really funny visual Muppet moments pop. Oh, all the music is amazing. The songs are great. It's it's just a it's a fun ride. So I have a confession in that I haven't seen a Muppet Christmas Carol. Ooh, you got You got to change that. I know. It's, it's one that's like a big blind spot in terms of Christmas movies because it's one that everyone always cites as one of their favorite Christmas movies, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. I think you should try and watch it this year. Truly, it's really something. And like I said, I really cannot compliment the virtuoso performance by Michael Caine enough. It is. That doesn't surprise really, me because he's Michael Caine. It's like one of his best perform. Maybe he really his is. Best per it's crazy. Wow. I think he's gone on record saying that that is like the movie he's proudest of. He loves the movie. He made the movie for his daughter so that she could watch something that he was in. And this came along and uh, man, serendipity at its finest right there. What a film. I'll check it out. And you can check out Love Actually, which is, I, will, I feel yeah, like we'll, a much lesser we'll trade notes. exchange, we'll trade notes. honestly. My number two is It's a Wonderful Life. There it is. Yeah, yeah, it, it deserves to be in the top five. It's a perfect movie. Frank Capra, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart lassoing the moon, gonna take That's it down. Right. It always leaves me a little misty-eyed at the end. And uh, I love It's a Wonderful Life, and I love, I love everything about it. I'm surprised that you, uh, that Shane, you like this movie as much as you do because you don't like things that are overly saccharine. Um, I do when they're like well made. It's a Wonderful Life never feels cheap. Everything in it feels incredibly earned. I think it's because the dark is so dark. It actually yeah. earns, it, it kind of makes it palatable where you, it kind of balances itself out. So It's one of those movies, like I have goosebumps now thinking of the ending. Like one of the things that kills me in movies is when people go out of their way to be kind. And also in real life, <laughs> um, you know, at the beginning when he's a child and he's like helping Mr. Gower, even though Mr. Gower is like not having it. I know you're gonna be, you got the telegram and you're upset. You put something bad in those capsules. It wasn't your fault, Mr. Gower. Oh man, Jesus Christ. I, yeah, it's a good movie. It's good. So good. My number two, Home Alone. I will also reveal my number two because it is also Home Alone. Is it really? Ah! You guys give up? 
Oh yeah, thirsty for more. Yes. I love I love that. Uh, it's great. You know, it's great. how much of this must be attributed to the work of Mr. John Williams? I don't know. <laughs> Um, a lot. A whole lot. A lot of it, yeah. He does some of the heavy lifting. Home Alone 2, could, you could potentially just slot that in here as well and swap yeah, them out. Both, or you could say both of them. They're essentially the same movie, so, <laughs> yeah. you know. The second one also has the superior old vintage movie gag. Yeah. Three. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, for a long time, I thought was from a real movie, but they actually no. filmed that for the movie. It's amazing. Yeah. Macaulay Culkin is so funny in those. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. Great. I guess he did get enough credit, because at the time, they were like... Because he was like the biggest star at the time. He was like the biggest star in the world, very fleetingly, <laughs> but yeah. justifiably so, because he's like, it's such a weirdly nuanced performance. He's um, asked to do a lot. I mean, he is. he's asked to appear helpless and uh, make you scared for him as a child, but also at times triumphant and smarter than two grown adults. Yeah, he's like a little stinker. It's a balancing act. And um, you get to believe that all of his incredible pranks don't actually kill them. Oh, he definitely That's murdered it. those two guys several times. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they may be immortal. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't get that in other, any other Christmas movie. Yeah. So it's fun to, to treat yourself to that. But I don't know that there's enough love in the world for the track that plays when Kevin starts to put his plan into action. Oh, yeah. I don't think that is recognized so for good. the banger that it is. Is. Why is that not played on it's the so radio good. every year? Why are there not remixes of that song? Sometimes I'll listen to that and I'll be like, this is the greatest piece of music written in the 1990s. You ever think of uh, like working out to it? Like, dun, 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 dun. it's so good. <laughs> you know, this movie also just, like Jingle All the Way, really incorporates great Christmas bangers. Like rocking yeah. around the Christmas tree when he has all oh, the yeah. people in the house, or even when they're rushing to the airport. It's just really riding a wave the entire time. Yeah. I don't. I didn't put Home Alone on my list. I feel like five years ago I would have put it on my list purely for nostalgia's sake. But I don't know. I, I feel like I revisited it recently and was mm. like, Kevin's Careful kind HT. of a little terror. Careful, I love HT. It. I love that funny guy. <laughs> I've never muted an expert on this show, but you got close there. You got <laughs> real not, close. We're not doing too many mutes on this one. I think we're all just celebrating. We're, we're celebrating the list. And yeah. you know, I don't hate Home Alone. It's just you know, not in my Christmas rotation anymore. I get it. I get it but in the same way, I don't, so. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, that's fair. M number one, let's move to HT, here we go. All right, I think you guys suspected what this was, but my number one is Elf. And I will also unveil my number one, because my number one is also Elf. You yeah. know what? Go. I, I I love this so much. I am I, I am such Elf. a fan. Like I said, there are many many iterations of my list where this ends up as number one. It's a fantastic. Talk, talk about it, guys. Talk oh, about it. You said so much about it, Shane, but it's just so quintessentially Christmas to me. And I'm also yeah. the same way about Will Ferrell, where I think that I can take him or leave him in some aspects, but he really toes the line, and he is able to meld those two: the silliness of his comedy with the uh, earnestness of his drama, and bring it together in that perfect Christmas sandwich. It might be my favorite execution of the fish out of water plot line. Like his yeah. finding ways to make fun of the city, like celebrating people who have signs that say they have the best coffee. Very funny. You did it! Congratulations! Taking all the gum off the railings. Disgusting, yeah, but also very funny. James Caan also fantastic in this film. I love, love James Caan so in this movie. so much in this movie. If you want to learn how to make your money in reactions, this movie is all about that, because he has uh, Will Ferrell to react to and very much doesn't feel like an afterthought. Yeah. His reactions are most of the punchlines. He makes a meal out of that straight man role. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a good movie. I think it deserves the spot uh, top the mountain top. Yeah. Okay, my number one. Movie. Okay. Is a Muppet Christmas Carol. Yeah, okay, we kind of talked about it already. Sorry, HT, I know uh, you haven't seen it, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. This may be the best Muppet movie. No. This also, that's no. my opinion. No. That's my opinion. No. Um, it's just an opinion, man. Um, <laughs> Some hot takes for this wintry season. There's like a scene at the end where Beaker gives a, a scarf to Michael Caine's absolutely perfect Scrooge. That's right. And it makes me tear up. Beaker! Yeah. Beaker! Yeah. Yeah. He should not yeah. be making me emotional. Yeah. The fact uh, that he does is amazing. And you know, we really didn't even touch too much on the music earlier, but the music's amazing. And look, a lot of the credit goes to Mr. Chuck Dickens. 
But uh, Kane really, <laughs> Kane really sells the transformation. He really does. That he goes me. through a, 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 tr a true arc in this film. Uh, it's a beautiful film. That and It's a Wonderful Life are like the two movies I watch on Christmas every year. So it's a great film. Uh, the Muppets is better though. The Muppets is definitely better. Uh, you know, agree to disagree. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Before we close this bad boy out, you guys have any closing thoughts here? Oh, we're gonna do honorable mentions? Oh, I got an no, honorable what? mention. Yeah, HT, you go first. Let's hear your honorables. Last year, Netflix released this animated Christmas movie called Klaus. That's oh, yeah. really, really good. The Grinch, of course. I can probably recite that Grinch animated yeah. short from memory because I've watched it so many times and I love it so much. I got two quick honorable mentions. Number one, it's not a good movie, but it does have one of the best holiday songs ever written. That's Bob Zemeckis's oh, Polar no. Express. Oh no. A little hot chocolate. No. Tom oh, Hanks song. singing about no, no, hot no. chocolate. This is this is Track the one where down. I'm gonna mute Shane because holy <laughs> <laughs> No, you can't do that, Turnhout. You can't do that. Yeah! Yeah! That's great. Really, really bad. I remember I had nightmares watching that movie. I was like, what is happening? Why yes. do they all have vacant stairs? And why are they coming out of the screen to kill me? Well, while Shane's muted, I'm gonna get in a couple of these. Rapid fire. The holiday, Nightmare Before Christmas, Gremlins, Black Christmas. Uh, another fun movie, Krampus, with Adam Scott Ooh, that came out. Krampus is great. I, I think that's about it for my honorable mentions. All those are worthy of your time. I guess we could unmute Shane now. Life and family life. <laughs> well, that does it for this episode of Top 5 Beatdown. Make sure you chime off in the comments to see if we... Uh, oh, would you be quiet? Here we've only got one rule! Here Make sure you chime off in the comments to let us know if we nailed it or if we missed the mark. Before we get out of here, Hoytran, is there anything you would like to shout out? Yeah, please check out my new podcast, Trekking Through Time and Space. It's a watch podcast for Star Trek and Doctor Who. And it's hosted by me and Jacob Hall. I'm a Doctor Who fan, he's a Star Trek fan, and we're introducing our respective favorite sci-fi shows to each other. So you can check that out on iTunes, Spotify, other podcasting platforms. That being said, that's, that's the Hot Chocolate. Oh, God. <laughs>